Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Uh, welcome to another video. And in this video, I'm not going to show you uh, any technical stuff or, you know, any DNS records, any workflow stuff or whatever. In this video, th I'm going to share some strategies that I, I know uh, works for those who are digital marketing agency owners and using Go High Level to do prospecting. So first of all, these are not invented by me. I don't have anything to do in the coming up process of these strategies. I've worked with uh, digital agency owners in the past. I have worked for digital agency owners in the past and I am a digital marketing expert and owner myself. So these strategies we have used, we have experimented with, we know they work because uh, we've done a lot of experiments, whether they work, whether they're just a big flop or whatever. And now we know that these things should be included. And I'm going to explain each and every one of uh, these strategies, why they work, why should you rely on them? So let's uh, go through my agency snapshot that I'm working with. And by the way, I'm going to give it for free to those who are willing to sign up using my link. That's in the description, obviously. Now, first of all, let's go through each one of them and then I'll just explain why they work, why they are good to rely on. Categorize nurture automation based on services. Now, what this means is every uh, system or every funnel has a starting point. So the starting point is when a new lead comes into your funnel or your system or your CRM, whatever. Almost all the marketing agencies, their goal is to engage as much as possible with the lead and convert it to a prospect. In other words, convert this lead to a prospect by booking a consultation. This will be an initial call. So what I mean is when a new lead comes in and you know what the lead is in need of, maybe website, maybe SEO, maybe lead generation, maybe Google ads, Facebook ads, cold email, whatever. If you know what the lead wants, then categorize the initial nurture sequence that you keep sending like emails, SMS, one day after, two days after, one week, two week, one month, two months. So you have to categorize this initial automation. And I've just done exactly that thing uh, in my digital agency snapshot. As you can see, a new lead comes in and this lead, uh, this automation actually determines based on the service the lead is interested in this workflow or this automation adds the lead to different workflows. So let me show you one of them. Let's say the lead is uh, in need of web design. So I've got a killer web design uh, automation sequence that asks the lead to book a call. Uh, we know this, we know that here are our projects, here are what our clients have said about uh, our work and stuff like that, right? So you can see this is a nice and long sequence. Similarly, it goes for SEO. Similarly, it goes for Google and Facebook ads. And this helps because uh, customization is the key to conversion, right? So the more generic, the more vague you are with your message, the less people will engage with uh, your automation or your message, right? So the more customized, the more specific you are with his needs. And if he sees that this is similar to what he needs right now, he'll just book a call right away with you, right? So this increases the closing rate or the booking rate by a lot. So it'll work like a charm. Number two, use DND. And this I've put in number two because this is really important. A lot of people right now uh, who are in the US or Canada, I know there are some A2P DLC stuff going on. You need to be 100% compliant uh, in order to send SMS. And because SMS are more, you know, engaging than emails nowadays, people uh, see their SMS more than they see their emails and the emails end up in spam or whatever. So. If you are using automations like this, you must have a DND automation like this. So if the customer or the lead replies stop, you must enable DND for that lead, you know, because otherwise it'll just increase the error rate of your SMS and you might get blacklisted with your email. So make sure you do that. 
I know like a lot of people don't engage a lot of people are just like irritated with all these automations going out so that's fine stale opportunity follow-ups so this is also another important thing stale opportunities means uh opportunities or tiles in your pipelines that are sitting idle for a specific amount of time so i'm counting 14 days old stale opportunities so when it's a new lead that's come to the system and we are sending them a bunch of follow-ups and it's been 14 days, no messages, no engagements, nothing. Now, a lot of people, I mean, almost all of them, what they do is they stop and they just mark them as lost or abandoned or whatever. This is good when you are getting a lot of leads, like 10 or 15 or 20 a day. But those who are just getting started, we cannot afford a lot of leads a day. So what we do is no matter how many we have, we try to do our best to engage with each and every one of them. So this is why this is really important. What you need to do is you need to have a workflow like this. When it's been in a pipeline, in a specific stage of pipeline for 14 days, and the name of this automation trigger is stale opportunities. When it's more than 14 days, or you can set this uh, time up, 14 days, 15 days, 20 days. When it's more than that, you need to have another fresh automation sequence Hey, maybe uh, you didn't notice, but we've been sending you messages. I've been trying to connect with you. And like the more you try to get personal and customized, the, the better for uh, conversion rate and closing rate. So you need to make sure you have something like that. Then you need to have an appointment canceled on no-show automations. When a lead does not show up or when a lead cancels after booking an appointment, like almost all the time they have an emergency or they're sick or they forgot they could could forget but like it it rarely happens when you know they they're not just interested once they book a call it, it rarely happens really so you need to have a solid cancelled or no-show appointment automation going out and I'll sh show you how I've done that so uh, where's that okay this in a, this is in a separate folder I think yeah so this is a confirmation reminders this I'm not mentioning because uh, like all of them have uh, like a co booking confirmation and reminder uh, automation sequence created and going out. But what I'm interested in showing you is something like this. So this uh, is checking whether the lead canceled or whether it was a no show. So if it's canceled, then uh, then a specific set of automation sequence if it was a no show then a different message sequence goes out this helps uh like this helps rescheduling uh for leads who booked a call but had to cancel or did not show up then this is actually for uh when a prospect becomes a client so after one or two weeks or maybe after a month you need to have a solid review automation going out asking for people asking people or asking your clients to leave a Google review in your Google business profile this helps in SEO and this helps in general as well if you think about it if you have like 100 or 150 reviews in your Google business profile then you are the most genuine you're the most uh, honest and you are the most solid digital agency uh, out there so this you need to have once they have become a client and when once you move the tile to your client pipeline after a specific time just like i said two weeks three weeks four weeks whatever you need to have a google review automation going out hey uh, i know it's been a while and we'd love to hear from you how we have been performing or you know these messages going out you could use chat gpt it's, it's really good like uh, in writing stuff like these because once they've become a client you don't have to be like super super compelling or whatever you could use uh, stuff like chat gpt to write them so these are the five things you need to do uh you must have in your digital agency account or snapshot if you're creating this for other people these help in conversion this help in closing and this will obviously help in your business growth and i hope this video helped I think it's been a long video comparing to my other videos and I, I really hope that you got to learn something from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you.